Hey, everyone, we're back. It must be Wednesday at 1 here on the Eastern Seaboard. My name is Allison Lee, your host here at Fun at One. Our free fun webinar is once a week right now where we talk about fun stuff that you want to make, do. Fantastic teachers come on and share all kinds of great uh, tips and techniques and ideas as well as products that you might want to get. Uh, I want to give you just a quick few commercials and a little bit of background. Um, first off, if for some reason if you can still hear me now, uh, you should be seeing a sign that says Fun at One with Cindy Pope and Allison Lee. That means you have found the uh, GoToWebinar presentation. If you lose that, you like, wait, where to go, where to go? Go into your, uh, your bar where you have all your icons. Look for the one that's orange with like a white flower or white snowflake. And if you hit that first, it'll bring the presentation forward again. So no worries. If for some reason you lose sound, that means your Wi-Fi probably wavered. Uh, when we show videos, depending on how strong your Wi-Fi is, they can look a little animated. Uh, in the recordings, they always run full speed. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? The You'll get an email. <clears throat> uh, it goes out usually the end of the day. It depends on how fast we can get the recording uploaded into the my library at craftcast.com. Uh, you do have to go in to craftcast.com and purchase for free today's recording. That's the only way it can end up in your library. They won't, if, you, if you're not buying anything else, no worries. It won't ask you for any money information. Uh, you just purchase it for free and it'll be in your library where you can stream it. You can download a little smaller file if you need to watch offline. Also today we'll have, besides the handout in there, um, we will have uh, some files that Cindy wanted to get to you to use. So there'll be some other goodies in there. Any problems figuring any of that out, just go to support at craftcast.com and we will help you maneuver through uh, any of that type of thing. Don't forget, we've just continued our coupon code because darn it, we need to get more classes to everyone. So 30% off coupon code spring 2020. Uh, I believe that for people who are creative, we need to have this in our life right now. Uh, all around the world, I hear from everyone, it's it's stressful. And if you can find a way to remove a little stress so you can cope with the rest of the world, I think that's really important. So enjoy that coupon code. Um, and again, any questions, just support at craftcast.com and we'll help you out there. Want to know anything more about a class or any of that type of thing. Uh, also coming up, I just want to show you, um, we have some really cool live classes still coming up. This Saturday, I was just talking before we started, is uh, Deb Hart's Pattern Trinket Box and Polymer Clay. They look complicated. Check them out. I swear to you, I'm really bad at these things. And I can do it after her class. She really breaks everything down. Love that. Then coming up on, on the 10th is uh, Deb Karash uh, is doing these freaking gorgeous also mixed metal flowers i mean this is metal smithing it's fabulous Cher shriver doing some more polymer clay work hadar jacobson doing 3d metal clay then back to some polymer uh next week on our fun at one is robert danzig doing um uh resin along with some something that pam east will show with follow-up classes on resin because i know we've been all really excited about resin if you were on for um I forget which one one it was, but heard Alicia Hart doing those wonderful embossed pewter boxes. She has a class coming up. Oh, gorgeous. You're going to love that. Uh, and then also, oh, Gail Crossman Moore is, um, she just showed me what she's working on. If you're not familiar with her work, look it up. She takes it all. Materials, colors, inks, felting, beads, resin. She has these beautiful hearts coming up that she's going to make. Anyway, we have great stuff coming up. I want to thank our sponsor at Cool Tools for sponsoring us these past few weeks. Um, lots of the supplies, and we put their link in your handout. Lots of the supplies you can get at Cool Tools, and we just love them. You know, we don't talk about anyone we don't love who has great customer service, period, end of story. So uh, we love them. They're great to work with and get your get your get uh, all your tools from. And hi, everyone coming on saying hello to me. I really appreciate that. Uh, again, if you, you're not seeing the presentation, just look for the orange circle uh, in your um, dock with a white flower. Hit that. It'll bring the presentation forward. Uh, you guys can all see that, right? Let me just do a quick double check with all of you. You can see the Cool Tools logo there, I'm assuming. Yep, thank you, Katie. Uh, so that's that. Did I tell you everything? We've got the 
coupon code coming up. Just so you know, also, one of the reasons we, thanks, Max, one of the reasons we increased all of our live classes coming up is all of our teachers, they lost their income from all of their live events that they were teaching and workshops. Uh, so this is a way to supplement their income to get their workshops still out there. So it's a win-win from everyone. People still get to take classes. Teachers make money. Um, I love showing everyone's um, tools that they have made and they're selling. Uh, it's a good thing all the way around. So that's that. All right. So today, all of you silhouette uh users. We have the guru on, just saying. She's going to show us in a few minutes some um, some goodies with the uh, silhouette. Uh, she's going to show us actually what I think is so great. If you're working with metal clay, how to use your silhouette for paper cutouts to check everything. Uh, I just love paper cutouts too. So um, we're going to show you that. She's going to show you how to uh, do something very important with your Curio tools to make sure they're aligned. We love our silhouettes and our crickets, uh, but we also know that there's so much more information out there to learn from. So we love um, having, uh, you know, classes that um, show off these kind of things. And a lot of these ideas, I see, Lisa, you just wrote in, yes, a lot of the ideas work with the cricket. The machine is the machine. Uh, all the machines use what's called SVG files. So when you can make it, which just stands for a scalable vector art. Did I say that right? SVG, scalable vector art. Um, graphic, sorry, that's why the G was wrong. Uh, so if you, if you can do that, you're in good shape. Um, Barbara, can you also use the brother scan cut if you don't have the silhouette? I'm not sure, but we'll, let's bring that up again when Cindy is talking. It's all about the file. If you can put an SVG file in, you're good to go. And we've sort of thought that the Silhouette software is the easiest for designing and saving those SVG files. So that's why we use that here. I've tried using the software that they recommend. <clears throat> if you want to design more with the Cricut, it's a bear, and I'm really good at software. So I would stick to the Silhouette. All right, so let me start off first, though, with I just wanted to show you two books. Hold on one second. I just want to take a little drink of water. Okay. So anyone into looking for a book they wanted to read? I found this one. Britt Marie was here. I saw it in the library, actually. I love going to the library. And then before I took it out, I did the sample read in my um, on my iPad, and I fell in love with it. And here's why, and here's why I'm bringing it up today. The woman right there, Britt Marie, she is, I'm going to put quote, peculiar, end quote. And it's written from her point of view. And I find that delightful to have the person that you are, uh, the lead character. Uh, I forget the technical term right now for that. Um, with a quirk and a peculiar approach. First person. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, I found it delightful. It is um, translated, uh, I believe, from Swedish, and I just thought it was really cool. I'm not familiar at all with the motion picture, but I love the book, so I'm going to just put that out there. There is a link in the handout, so you can um, get that if you like. Oh, you do love, oh, yay, A Man Called Ove is fam Fabulous too. I'm reading that next. Thank you, Laura. Uh, really fun book, easy to read, uplifting. These are the things I like right now. Here's the other one. I'm just going to do creative thinking. Let me just do a quick video here. Okay. Who's familiar with the magazines? Calm, C-A-L-M. I don't think they're making them anymore. Maybe they are. I can't remember if that one closed or not. Uh, but I do like their a lot of their publications. Uh, but this one is by them. Let me just run the video. I'll show you a few of the pages. I'm da -da. Um, What's fun in here is... If you have kids or grandkids, there's lots of fun things to do. This has um, mazes and games and, um, I know, boost your brain, mind games. I always am a, I always fall for mind games. It, um, I find it really fun. So there's fun things to do. There's pullouts, um, you know, information to read, finding the meaning of music you just saw. It has lots of stuff to keep you occupied and also play and understand design. I think it's fun and it's called Creative Thinking. They make a few different um, uh, publications under Calm, but then different names on top. Uh, but I think it's even inspiring like that honeycomb you just saw there. You know, you could have done something on the silhouette. Uh, here is this fold out 
poster that's in there. I mean, it's fun stuff to do with kids as well, which I think is helpful right now. Uh, I think that was a whole like maze game in there. So anyway, check that out. I always just like sharing some fun uh, other things that are out there down the rabbit hole. That's where we all go, down the rabbit hole with fun things. Uh, so I'm a sucker for these, and um, uh, I just like sharing it all. It is no fun. Uh, did you guys see that video? Let me just double check. I just want to make sure technical is going. Mags, did you just see that little video? Yep. Okay, good. Um, so let's see, Colleen, just make sure you've gotten your uh, webinar presentation up front that you can see it, which if you hit that little orange circle with the white snowflake, it should bring it forward. Uh, so that's that creative thinking. There's a link in there um, in the handout if you're interested, and there's all kinds of fun stuff like that. So I just wanted to show you guys that because I thought it was fun, creative thinking. All right, now to go on to the present big presentation of the day, Ms. Pope. I'm just going to say a little bit about her first. I, you know, she she's laughing in the background. She wrestles this machine to the ground and then shares with us how to do everything. She's actually stayed here with me once and yeah, and did the whole leather class where, where she does the whole leather um, embossing and engraving and staining and all of that. It's magic. I'm just going to tell you, she's really good. So. You'll just love that. Uh, will you have access to this video after the live? You will. You will, Joe. You'll get everything that you need. Uh, so there's lots of Cindy's classes in the handout. Um, again, just hit support at craftcast.com. We'll help you with anything. Uh, but she's going to walk us through first this idea of um, paper cutouts and design. And she just has to talk about it because... I can't give it justice. So Ms. Pope, thank you for coming on and showing us all of this. Thanks, Allison. You know, it's always a pleasure. So this, um, the first little, I'm going to do a, the, a little pretty video and then we're going to do the tool alignment. But then afterwards we have some really fun uh, other paper cutout things. So if, don't get bogged down in the middle with the tool alignment, but it is important if yours is out of alignment. So um, this is a video that I did. Um, it's one of the bonuses from the Silhouette uh, Design Camp um, that I did in 2018, and I'm working on an um, upcoming one. So I'm going to show you pretty much how this works. So um, what I'm doing in this particular video is I'm testing my leather cuff for size in paper, and then I'm doing like a teacher's um, presentation. I am not spatial at all. Many of my students are not spatial at all. And um, so when I tell them we're doing a layered piece and we're going to do this and that, and if I don't have a million prepared expensive metal clay pieces, it's really hard for them sometimes to visualize. And mm -hmm. I understand that because that's pretty much how I am. Mm -hmm. So um, can we pause it for a second? Yep. Okay. So um, what, I, what I do is... Um, I have a big size like model in paper mm -hmm. and then sometimes if it's really complicated I give every student a little cutout for them to play with so that's just that's kind of what I what I do that I and it's fun and they're colorful and they're big and people can touch them without breaking I've had some of my I used to do step-by-step -step metal clay and I've had them break right before the class when I traveled and this is not going to break. So I think paper is such a great idea to test for. I mean, okay. I love working with paper and then testing what things might look like or your proportions is a great idea. Yeah, paper's easy. So this is the conical cuff design that we did in design camp. And I think it was on day three. And so I, I need to test to make sure it's going to fit around my wrist nicely, if I like the thickness, if I like how it looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in this case, I'm thickening up the outside red line. So I'm mm -hmm. ungrouping, thickening up the red line. Uh, you don't need to do that. You can leave them at zero, and then you just won't see the line when you print it out. And then the other thing you have to do, this is something that's been already prepared for the Silhouette software. So I have done a line fill in that pretty Hawaiian pattern, mm -hmm. but I need to fill that with black because it doesn't see a line with a zero thickness when you print. And in order to print, I need to change to eight and a half by 11. 
And in the newer softwares, you also have to make sure your mat says eight and a half by 12. You didn't have to at this time because it, it doesn't believe that you have eight and a half by 11 unless you have told it that. <laughs> you want to make sure your portrait viewpoint, so you make sure you're going up and down. And then you just print it to your printer. I print it, this one I actually printed on Costco cardstock, but what I really like the Recollections cardstock mm -hmm. at Michael's. It comes in a million colors and they have a nice, uh, reasonable pack in white. Um, so that's what I'm using now. And the setting is a little bit different. So because the Curio always loads in the right place, if you put it perfectly on the grid, you're gonna be really close. Um, and I always bray it down because it's easier to move things with little parts um, if you've brayed it down. Uh, we actually, uh, you know, always load in the right place, but um, you want to be careful to uh, kind of pay attention to where it's going. Your printer could be off a little bit. Mm -hmm. If your printer's off, it's not going to cut in the right place. But in my t-shirt class, I'm going to teach you how to use registration marks. Oh, I was just going to ask you about that. Okay. Well, I have never taught it because it's scary, but <laughs> it's really not. It's not. It's I'm not. I'm going to teach you that. So before we cut paper, and when we've been cutting a lot of paper, you can um, sharpen your knife. My friend, um, who is Paula, who's a wonderful metal clay artist and a curio whiz, she came up with this idea to sharpen your blades. And what we do is we take the top off and then we slice across extra strength Reynolds wrap, which I can't get anymore, so I'm using regular Reynolds wrap. But um, what it does is it sharpens the blade. This works better with the original ratchets than the ones that are a little harder steel, the white um, premium blade. When you screw the top, you so you take it down to zero, you sharpen, when you screw the top back on, make sure it's screwed all the way. If you don't screw it all the way down, the blade's not going to stick out far enough. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take this up to four, but with the um, recollections paper, I'm using a three. And you'll see that in the, in the last video we do. Carefully lock it into place with the fin forward and then send to the silhouette and it's going to cut it out. So when we're ready to cut, we have to go back to the mat looking like the curio. And I've done that. Uh, you should see that in detail in the last video. But I'm going to choose red only. So I uncheck everything. My blade is in the left-hand holder. If you know about the Curio software, it's got two holders. So the left-hand holder is always where I put my blade. And I almost always use the color of red for cutting because that's the default color. I no longer switch it to sketch pen. Um, I always use cut now. So cardstock, plain, cut. And then I up the pressure from 20 to 23, just because I feel like it cuts a little bit better. So here we go. Now, you said you always set it to cut just then when you were the last Yes, okay. this, this video says sketch. Okay, but now and, you always do cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I learn things all the time and sketch probably won't hurt anything. But I feel like um, setting it to cut is working well. And I'm sure there was a reason at the time. Got it. But here it is. Isn't that great? And so that. instead of messing up the size in leather, I can test this out. And we're going to test it in the next video. But first, we're going to cut the flower. Now, who wrote me in? Someone wrote me a question about afraid to test the leather. Here you go. Here's the way to do it. Yeah. And there's a whole, that conical cuff, um, there's, a, there's a whole video on doing that design. And then there's a whole separate bonus video on leather and all the different patterns you can do. And it's, it's a really comprehensive video. You know what? I figured out it's like six hours, I think, of stuff in that. Um, I couldn't stop. I know. So I'm just saying to everyone, <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's the um, boot camp by uh, Cindy in silhouette. And I'm just telling you, you have hours of everything. And she's actually done yeah. a table of contents today. And there's 30% off. Just do it. It's, it'll be your summer vacation. You'll learn everything. <laughs> yeah, a lot of my students took it 10 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. And it's got design techniques, but it's also got projects. So it's pretty, pretty darn fun, I think. 
Yeah, it is. It was hard work, but doing it was a blast with Allison. We had a good time. We did. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting out these flowers. Now I made a little bit of, mis of a mistake and I made um, the red lines mm -hmm. um, on the pattern line too. So you always want to only cut out red. and But it's okay because I actually ended up liking the way it looked. Okay, so a mistake worked in your favor. Well, yeah, and, you know, I used to get extremely stressed out with mistakes, more with metal clay. Sure. But, you know, with paper, um, you can always do it again pretty yeah. easy, pretty fast. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so all of these you did, you printed them first, and now you've put it back in to cut them all out. Yeah, and this is another one um, from the design camp. I teach you all how to do these rotate designs and turn them into flowers. Yeah, it's fun. And so this is just was just one of the projects that I did. And... Um, it, you know, I thought this would be, I do layered pieces all the time in class with stones. So I thought this is a really good example piece mm -hmm. to show people how to put it together in class. Mm -hmm. I love the leather the, coasters um, down in the lower right there too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I had those, my, my work surf, we were, I was doing a lot of filming for that class. So um, you'll see the leather coasters again in a second. So I test and make sure it came up, which it cut beautifully. And sometimes, especially when I'm filming, I'll take the mat off because the um, platform, which we love the platform because it is hard and mm -hmm, it does mm -hmm, a great cut. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll just take the, the mat off and work with that. And um, one thing I didn't do in this class, but if you um, want to, you can also pull these up with a tissue blade. Mm -hmm. Careful not to cut yourself, but um, a tissue blade works really nice for pulling these pieces up. They have that tool that I thought is good too. That little spatula one seems to work. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, so now we're gonna put it together. So there's the leather, stuff from the leather bonus video where I, I had to show you how to do everything because I've oh, yeah, always wanted to do uh, an anatomy of a leather design. And so for this class, we actually put one together and it, I thought it, I had a lot of fun making it. So here's all my pieces. So this is a big demo. But I also wanted to show you um, down on the left-hand corner right there, sometimes I print it out for size. And that's what we're going to be doing in the left video to see, like, if the size is right. So what I do is I, a lot, this confuses a lot of people in class. So I take and I make, uh, use these flat back CZs with a diamond cut. And so it's a little bit different than, than setting a pointed CZ. It actually uses left, less clay. And I also am testing my little leather thing, which I love. I made it and now I can't find it. But um, <laughs> it, you, do, you do need to take a, into account the thickness of the leather. But it, the big problem is if it's too short. Got it. Okay. So, And leather is not that expensive. But I still, you know, would prefer to get it right the first time. Sure. I learned from my mistakes, but my preference is, is not to make them. <laughs> so. All right, so here's my flower. So what I would do in class is I would um, show people how to do this. And I also have metal clay um, samples, but being really big, especially the age that some of us are, large actually is a good example. So in this one, I decided I want these leaves stepped up a little bit. So I put a little circle of, I'll put a circle of clay under this, and then I'll do the same thing with the other one and I'll turn it sideways. Yeah, that looks cool. So I could play with the design. This this one, there's actually a way that I could flip those corners under. And that was a really cool design too. So then I want to show them because they're used to pointed stones. Oh, and I'm going to curve it up too. You'll see in the final picture, you can curve paper. If you use watercolor paper, you can actually wet it and mold it. So, um, but here's the seat for the stone, which is slightly bigger than the size of the stone. And it sits down in there. And that's what I do with a larger stone. And then I put a little bezel on top, which is that bezel is how we trap the stone. And I, I make it a little bit smaller cool. than the size of that stone. And it traps it in. And so in this, uh, something this complicated in class, I probably would give every student one and then have a big one to show. And with the bead class, I do the same thing. I have giant bead patterns 
but that's how it, see, I curved it a little bit. Yeah, I love so, it. So, and with flexible clay, we can do that. Once we cut it out, if you've got flexible clay and you're careful, uh, you can curve it up and just, you know, really make uh, I love it. a good design. Um, now, wait, see, Laura Hart wants to know, hi, Laura. Um, hi, Laura. Is that an inverted regular CZ? It is. Okay. Um, you know, uh, Cool Tools has these, they call, I call them faceted flatback CZs. Um, and as soon as I started bringing those to class for projects, my plain CZs didn't sell anymore because they're really pretty and they, they, they uh, pick up a shine and you can get them like between three millimeters and I think like 16 millimeters. Yeah, I love so it inverted. Lots of sizes. Especially on that. Isn't that fun? Love that. You know, well, you I, don't have to, with metal clay, you don't have to, um, the point is usually probably two to three millimeters. So you need clay in the back. Mm -hmm. So in this one, I'm using a little less clay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also, just so you all know, I don't know how anyone would do, learn these machines without these kind of classes, frankly, because the machines, they're huge. They're, it's it's a, it's a very deep as far as what you could do with them. But I loved in that last video, and it is in that um, boot camp where Cindy shows the difference between the emboss, the engraved, the fill, the, all those different things, what it looks like so you can pick the right way you want to handle it. And yes, someone just said, is that boot camp from last year? Yes, but um, Cindy is also doing an update to it. Uh, is it. No, wait, you're doing a new class that'll show some of it's, the new things. It's got some new things. You know, I couldn't do a th another three-day class, but it was really fun. And I've been re-watching it a lot to do the table of contents. And, you know, it was really fun to do once I was done with it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lot, but it, but I love to share these new techniques because I'll tell you, I learned something new. Like every week, it's like, look, look what this does. And yeah. that's why preparing for these classes is a lot of fun. So if you are a paper artist, you could make a stunning brooch in paper. Oh, with a real yes. CZ stone because CZ stones are not that expensive. You can buy them from cool tools. And so, Oh no, you know, it's, it gives you so many, you could, yeah, it, you're, this is your template. You could cut it out of polymer. You could cut it out of paper clay. I mean, this is a thing when you learn how to do this, it's go down the rabbit hole. All right. So it's now fun. I know. Okay. So I like the name of this video. Why does it matter? Okay. So before we start running the video, let me tell you real quickly. Um, I had a lot of students about, I've been doing this, I think about seven, eight years, about three years in, I had students starting to say their borders were off or, you know, their, le their etching didn't match with their cutting, even though it was right on the screen. And I think what happened is, you see the pretty border on this one piece, I started adding a border to pieces and we started working small because small is really in right now. Those little earrings I did in that boot camp class, I love those earrings. I wear them all the time. Um, so I'm going to show you why it matters and where we see it. Okay, so sounds go good. Let me do, before I just start, let me do a quick question here. Julie, just um, send, you can uh, get through to Cindy on Facebook. She just wants to know where you'll be teaching live again when we all start. I think, is that the best way to get on your um, announcements that way, Cindy, yeah. do you think? Um, yeah. You can join MC Sillies. And if you've taken a class, um, you can, I can put you in the private student group for CraftCast. Totally worth and it. Just, totally worth yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> just send Sally a note um, or send me a note on Facebook. But um, if you're an MC Sillies person, um, it's a little easier to get in. It, Facebook has made it a little difficult to be in a private, like, secret group. Right. But um, we'll get you in there. And that is such a fun group. We have 500 members and I do Facebook lives and there's a lot of really good information. Yeah, it's all great. And Sally or someone who's on or maybe Mags, can you just put the link in the box there for the for Cindy's? Um, MC Sillies. Well, MC Sillies and also the boot camp craft cast just because I didn't pull it up. I know it's in the in the handout. I just don't have the handout open because people are asking. I just want to make sure you get it. Totally a yeah. great class. All right, here, I'll play the video. Okay. So I'm going to show you um, the average tool, right-hand tool is off between 0.1 and 0.3 millimeters. So I'm going to show you what a 0.3 millimeter looks like. So I have an earring and I'm going to duplicate it using the wonderful replicate tool. Oh, no, the tool up at the top. I'll use replicate later. 
And I'm going to ungroup this. And then I'm going to take the pattern in the middle. And I'm just going to select that pattern shape. And I'm going to move it over 0.3 millimeters using a tool I don't use very much. And it's this little moving tool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say move to the left 0.3 millimeters. And it's not terribly noticeable. You know, it, it, it doesn't look visually off. And this is a pendant that's about two and a half inches. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the same thing with the little um, one inch earring. And you're saying that aligns it now the way it should be. Well, I moved it over to show you what a difference looks got like. Got it, got but it. But I'm going okay. to show you what a different looks difference looks like on the little earring, and you'll be like, oh, my gosh, it's really noticeable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is why I think people started to notice it. And I had noticed I have two machines that I have an adjustment on. So we're going to select this, and I'll move it over 0.3, and you'll see it's hugely noticeable. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, um, and with a little thing, if I want a pattern on it, my border's only like one millimeter. And the bigger things, the border is two millimeters. So look at the difference there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, really, mm -hmm. really noticeable. And I'm going to show you on the beads because the bead class, which is, there's a free um, bead bonus video, which works for paper or metal clay um, on CraftCast. We made the bonus for that class um, free, but um, on the B classes, when people also started noticing it, I kept I would get some notes from people. So she's doing mostly large size projects, but you know, I, there's a lot of little things. So here I moved it over 0.3, not a big deal. These are the things we need to learn from Cindy. You know what I'm saying? And I just put in there the boot camp link for everyone. I mean, you you get every bit of information you need. <laughs> So, so see how that is really noticeable. Mm -hmm, so I was mm -hmm. getting, I was getting calls from people or, or notes from people and they were saying, you know, my, I, it's perfectly aligned on the screen. What's happening? Well, we were working small. And once you start working small, you're going to see that difference. And the aligning, um, I've tried to do the video about four times, but I think I have it this time. And I'm going to show you how I do it. And it's amazing that this inexpensive machine allows you to do this alignment. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. almost like magic. Mm -hmm. It is all magic. We love our curios. We love our curios. And I would suspect Ellie or um, one of my other friends, I, I suspect this would work on the Cameo 3 also, which mm -hmm, has mm -hmm. um, dual holders. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now my Cameo 3 is not off, so I haven't tested it. Okay. So here I have my brand new Silhouette Pens. Uh, this is the new version, and they're really, really pretty, and I think they work really well. And I write on my I have six curios. I write on my curio if there's an adjustment to be made. Um, it automatically is saving it, I believe, in the firmware for that machine, which is kind of magical too. Um, I know I understand like enough to be dangerous how that works, <laughs> but <laughs> so you get your pen started anytime you're using Silhouette pens or uh, other pens, but I, I like that the, these new silhouette pens are really nice. You get it started first mm -hmm. with a little swirl, just like any pen, and lock it into place. Make sure it's sitting all the way down in the holder, and be gentle. Don't manhandle your machine. Oh my gosh, those pen colors are just making me happy right there. I know. <laughs> they are. There's some good prices out there on them, too. So I'm going to load my my mat with cardstock on it. And this is the recollections cardstock. And I checked with Ellie, who's um, one of our curio gurus, and she said that's one of her pa favorite papers. It cuts really nice. The fibers are well holding well together. Okay. So we have, um, I'm going to do some little circle tests. And I'm going to use pink for the left side holder. And that holder is stationary. So that's not what we're adjusting. Purple is for the right side holder, and this is the holder we're adjusting. Got and it. for metal clay, um, we cut with the left hand holder and etch with the right hand holder. Got so it. this is why okay. our etching can look off. It's making sense. And with with same thing with leather, you know, I cut with one holder and mm -hmm, etch with another. Mm -hmm. So I had to put in the scale for Y versus X. I'm really good at math until we get to anything spatial and then I'm not good at math. So I had a little 
X versus Y on the left. First time I did this with my friend Beth, it was really, really hard to adjust. So I finally, I think I've quantified how to make it easier. So you always want to be in millimeters and you can't do it in inches and then go back because the a lot to alignment will not switch. Not happy. So okay. always put yourself in millimeters first. Okay. When I started the video, I didn't do that and I um, had a problem. And so I'm making a one inch circle, which is about 25 millimeters. And then I'm gonna do an offset and the general offset will give you two millimeters. And this is enough to show you when you put it on the paper, if your um, machine is off. Oh, got it. Okay, so two millimeters so is a proprietary one that it goes to when you just ask for an offset. It's just the automatic app. Right, okay. And so I don't want you to have to change anything. So I'm putting, um, I ended up actually doing red in the middle because you couldn't see mm -hmm. the purple very much. Mm -hmm. And then, or the pink. So I'm gonna put, um, purple on the outside. Okay. And then I'm going to center again because some of your mice tend to move your circles. So always center again and then group. Got it. Okay. And now I'm going to use the replicate tool and I'm going to make four of these. I'm thickening up the lines. Don't you do that, but I'm thickening up the lines so you can see it on the video. So um, don't do that though. And everyone, so this I'm is gonna... in the downloads. Cindy's already giving you this little chart. Uh, and an SVG I'm giving file. you a file that has actually, um, it has 12 circles um, that you can just download. So I'm going to, just because I'm obsessive, it's not necessary. I'm lining them up and then I'm going to turn these to brown. And if you take some of my metal play classes, you know, brown is the color I always use that we're putting on the screen, but we're not ever going to cut or etch with it. So I only want to deal with one circle at a time. Okay. So we're going to start with the first circle. It's centered, okay. And we're gonna go to the send tab. And of course I have all kinds of funny colors on there. So I'm gonna uncheck all the browns. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I have two. And then I'm going to leave on the right hand holder, which is the one we're gonna adjust is purple. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna choose the tool holder that's blue. And then on the left hand holder, I'm gonna choose red. And I'm using cardstock plane and I'm, I've got it switched to cut. Mm -hmm. I did switch it to cut in the, in real world. And so, no, it's on sketch. We're sketching. We're going to cut in a minute on the other video. So we're going to do this purple one first, and then it's going to do the pink one. And then we're going to zoom in and I, purposely made this one off more than this machine is so you can really see it so let's put it up close oh yeah that's and you really can off see mm -hmm. it's off to the left yep. and on a one inch project this will make you crazy yep so we need to adjust to the left that's going to be a positive adjustment so i don't it, it, i don't know why it's a positive adjustment but it is so um and i gave you a nice table for later so I want to fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to turn this one to brown because I'm done with this one. Got it. At the end, did you say the machine will hold this correction? When you it will for okay. this machine. Okay. And even if, if, it, if the machine isn't saved in there, because when I, I went and got one of the machines that was off and I plugged it in and it wasn't saved under my sun settings but when i plugged it in and it went to the tool alignment it was had the proper adjustment in it okay so that's so what you meant before me, i went right to the firmware it, it saved at a lower level than yeah it saves actually in the software your machine has software yeah so it saves it in the machine this is you know silhouette is very sophisticated it in is a lot of ways so then i'm going to go to the send tab and i'm going to do the exact same thing but I'm going to go to tool alignment and I had made it off minus two O mm -hmm. and I know positive one O is right. So I'm going to put the plus one O in there on some of your machines. When you do this and mm -hmm. I'm going to hit tab and enter, make sure it enters. Yep. And so I noticed um, on some of my machines, it'll actually do a little click. Oh, so you hear it actually move a little bit. So yeah, this one I didn't, but it still worked because you'll see it's kind of like magic. We're going to hit exit 
And then we're going to send again and you're going to see what happens. Oh gosh, this is so worth doing and having all these little samples. So you're not crazy when you do your actual project. Yeah, especially if you're doing beads and things like a lot of people do paper beads and, um, you know, if you're only using one holder, it's fine. But I like to use two holders. I like mm -hmm. to do multicolor things. Um, I, I like to use the dual uh, holder system. Mm -hmm. I really, really like it. And I'm so glad that the Cameo 3 now has it. We can see already. There you go. So look what happened. Yep. Is that yep, amazing yep. or what? Yep, yep. That's fabulous. So what you would do now is if it's, I only do one axis at a time. So and I always start with the X axis because that's more likely to be off. Mm -hmm. But if it were off up and down, then I would move to the Y axis. Got and it. next okay. screen, we're going to show you a little chart I put together, which I hope will explain exactly how to adjust. But um, so that is how you do it. And I have had several people, you know, I've been trying to work on this and I've done lives with people online and Zoom. But um I wanted to really get a comprehensive overview of how it works. And I, th I think we're there. I hope that's genius. Uh, and this is included in the, the in this um, when you get it in your library under the downloads where the handout is. You'll also see that SVG file and a little chart, a little sign that shows you like this what to do. Yeah, the chart is actually in the handout. Yes, correct. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. So so I put together and because I'm not spatial this was a talent but I put together a little example about so if your purple line is too close to the red line then you're going to increase by 0 0.10 millimeters at a time if it's too far away you're going to do negative adjustments on the x-axis if if the purple line is too close to the bottom you're going to increase by 0 0.1 millimeters um, and if the purple line is too far, you're going to decrease by 0.1 millimeters. I actually, we do it 0.1 millimeters at a time. Don't ever try to adjust both axes at once. That's what um, Beth and I did when we oh. were first trying to adjust hers. Good tip. And we, we scrapped it and went back. Now, I do have one student, Tanya, who her machine, I think we adjusted it back and forth so many times, not in a methodical way, that it just wouldn't adjust. Um, so I would say when you get close, stay there. Don't okay. adjust it like 50 times. I think it was, we just overloaded the machine. So what she does, if you can't get this adjustment to work, which she's the only one I know who can't, you can put your etcher and your cutter in the left-hand holder. Genius. Okay, let me take a few quick questions. Um, oh, Max put up, here's a good bundle sale, you guys, for, let's see, Cura Bundle with those sketch pens. I'm going to send it all to you. Max, just put in the code and all of that if you want to check that out. Um, we love that. Thank you, Max. Uh, it is fabulous, right? Uh, thank you, Katie. Um, let's see, Cindy, can you mention the Cameo 3? Would it be the same with the Cameo 4 that she just got for Mother's Day? Yeah, yeah, special. You know, I do not have a Cameo 4. Allison has one and she can try it on it. <laughs> not without Cindy <laughs> holding my hand through every step. Um, yeah, I have, you know, I have so much work with my uh, Cameo 3 and my, I, I love the idea of the long holder though. And the curios, the curios are still my favorite just because yeah. we always load in the right place. Exactly. Yeah. It's a little foolproof in a lot of respects once you understand it. Yeah. So yep. I love the curios. Um, this is a good question. Monica said, Cindy, if you adjust in one place on the mat, will it be, re will it be effective for the whole mat area? I've had a different print result on the lower right portion of the mat. Interesting. Um, Monica. You know, I don't, it, it may be because of the way the carriage is moving. Um, I find on my 12 inch mat and on this one, the lower right hand holder corner and the, the lower bottom on the eight, uh, the eight and a half by 12 mat is kind of problematic. And it may be just because of the way the, platform moves back and forth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It may be a weight issue. That's so I point. often with metal clay, I'll stick up at the top and I try to stick in the middle, but all these across the top will work. I think you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, we could ask one of our really smart friends like Kay Hall, but I bet it has to do with the mat moving. It's just doesn't have as much control in that area because it's not and how solid. Heavy, how heavy a material you have on the mat? 
Like I'll put, I put slate on mine. I mean, you put <laughs> slate on it. It's heavy. So that um, gear system is having to move uh, a lot of weight. So I think sometimes that makes a difference. But um, general Wait, rule for metal clay, I stay in the Here middle is- until I... Kay Hall is on. Thank you, Kay. She said, yay, Kay, yay. She says, if you have that problem with the tool holders, you may need a distance adjustment. Ah. Okay, so we have to look into that. I would love to have Kay um, explain all the other adjustments. This is the one I understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Kay, because Kay's an engineer. Yes. And she's really smart. Yes. She understands them all. She does. She is. I understand Thank you for that, Kay. and we'll talk. Maybe you want to come on and show us all those kind of adjustments. Yeah, Kay is amazing at this. All right, so let's move on here. We're going to go to testing our cutouts. Okay, so we also, I also test my cutouts for size and workability. Like, does the project actually work okay. in real life? And um, I hate to make something in metal clay and find out it doesn't work. Metal clay can be very expensive. Even if you're using base metals, it's a lot of work to get to the final piece. So here are a bunch of designs I d- I've been doing for some of the lives and for um, the class I didn't get to do in Tucson, but they'll get to do it maybe next year. And um, so I wanted to kind of test these all in paper. These were not all already um, designed to go to the printer. They mostly have pictures in them, but I always want to make sure there's a red outline around it. And so you see each one has a red outline. And some of you know um, the one right to the right, which we'll get to in a minute, I think. Oh, I'm, I'm putting an outline around and I'm moving the, uh, putting a hole in them. Because a lot of them, if they're not already designed for the curio, I'm just testing to see if I want to go that route. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you'll, uh, you'll have to add a hole. Because, because where the hole is is important. Also, where you know, which clay you're using. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm centering the hole and then I'm grouping the hole only with that outside red. And I'll show you another way to do that um, later in a minute. And then I group the whole thing together because once you get things centered, group them. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, sometimes you'll accidentally just grab that um, outside and off, make it off center. I did that once with a class with Holly Gage, and she said, Cindy, that looks off to me. And I said, no, it can't be off. And what happened is I hadn't grouped it together, and I moved it a little bit. You didn't even realize but She that. helped me. Yeah, she helped me design, redesign it so the asymmetry of the piece looked okay. But um, I, I don't have the best eye, so I don't necessarily notice that. Control E is a shortcut for um, make compound path. You can also go under... Um, object to make compound path. And anyone who's freaking out by hearing these terms, that's why it's great to take, um, you know, beginner classes and just start and they'll become familiar to you. I promise you. Yeah. The version, the version four class is a good one. Yes. And I think that even if you have a kiln, the torch fired earrings class is pretty good. I actually designed a lot of that for people that already knew the SIL software, but I think I cover it step by step. Mm-hmm, and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm thinking about doing some uh, really, really basic classes, I think, for each tool. I think it's a good idea. So this one, I thought it'd be really fun to have a little cutout in it. And my hope was that I could put the ear wire at the top. So I'm doing this test to see if that's going to work. Okay. And then... Um, I love the gonna, design. I also thought it was be a little pointy on the sides with that size where it might hit my uh, neck. Uh, so I want to actually like, you know, I, these are all uh, post shrinkage and you could do, do the same thing with leather. You know, if you're mm-hmm, going to do something mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. a leather piece, a lot of you work with leather. Um, you can also test in paper first. Oh, that'd be great in leather, that earring. I love that. It would. I should try that. Yeah. Very nice. And these ones to the right, these are my like new favorite earrings. Um, the, of all the designs I've done, I'm very excited to make these in metal clay. Um, they remind me a little bit of some of the earrings that we did in the um, torch fired earrings class. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That Lovely. has cutouts because um, I'll tell you in a, a metal smith, sometimes they'll look at my work when it has cutouts and they'll like, you are such a good sar. And yeah. It's like, no. Right. 
a jeweler sock. Yeah, no, <laughs> just say yes. <laughs> Especially when you, you know, to make two look the same. And then they look at me and they said, you used your machine, didn't you? And I was like, yes, I did. <laughs> so I decided this was a little too close to the top. And I, you know, so some of these adjustments I'm doing before I even cut it out, just mm -hmm. to make sure mm -hmm. that's close. And I use a little line to say, how close to the top is it now? 1.97 yeah. millimeters. Okay. Yeah. So it's two millimeters from the top. I think that's okay because this is probably going to be um, uh, fine silver. But if you're doing things in um, sterling silver, obviously you, you can make it um, uh, a little bit closer to the top because it's stronger. Okay. Um, you'll see I made a little mistake here and uh, I didn't notice till I was rewatching. I'll make it a compound path, mm -hmm. but I lost the little dot at the bottom. I didn't go far enough down. Oh. And you'll see it when we actually do the cutout. I, okay. I didn't notice and then I checked on the cutout. I like, oh. Oh, that was off that. Okay. That's probably where a stone will go. So uh, you never have to do anything twice because you can just mirror or replicate. So I'm going to mess around and put holes in some of the others. And then these, these ones, I really like the purple ones, but I'll tell you, I think the top is going to be problematic. I didn't even put a hole in it because I couldn't really figure out, but I'm going to look at it when it prints out and think about what I want to do. Okay. Okay, here's my other way to make a hole. And I think this is easier. So um, Kay will like this because we're gonna use the modify tools and they're my favorite. So I'm gonna take and draw a little circle and I like my ear wire circles to be like one and a half, two. Mm -hmm. And even if I don't actually cut them with the silhouette, I do always put a mark on there because I, I'm not very good at centering. So let's see if we can center this to the earring. It's an asymmetrical shape, and I will tell you, no, it won't center nope, across the middle. Nope, nope, nope. So I'm going to hit undo, and I'm going to center it by eye. And you could all, you know, you could actually use your little uh, ruler to see how far it is. But I think I've got it pretty good centered by eye. And then I'm going to select both. I'm going to use this amazing modify tool. So modify is the one with a little circle and this rectangle down at the bottom right. I'm just going to say subtract mm -hmm. and it creates a hole and it's going to subtract the last shape you made. So the shape that's on the top and I'm going to group it. And yeah. I think that's, a nice that's a way great way. Yeah. 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 Because it actually um, put a little hole by the pattern. Now, a lot of times I'll make a little border around the hole when I'm designing for the curio, but this is just to test the pieces and I'll, I'll do some additional work when I'm ready to actually um, commit them to metal clay. Uh, let me see if we can stick a quick question in. How thick is the clay yeah. Barbara wanted to know? Um, it depends on the piece with uh, clay, clay that um, is, I'm using sterling silver, which I do with a lot of my light earrings. I'm doing two and a half cards, which is, I think, 0.67 millimeters thick. Okay. Um, if it's a tiny earring, I can go thicker, be, but I, do, I don't like them heavy. So even with fine silver, I'm going three cards probably. All right, you're setting up your mat. We've been watching you set up here. So in order to print it, this is where I told you I have to switch it to eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to have to turn it. And I said, I'm going to use letter size, which is what's in my printer. And I used to always have a problem with printing out, but this actually works. And then I'm going to print it. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go to preferences and make sure it's up and down. And it's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had a lot of printouts print out the wrong way. And so I'm going to print this onto cardstock. I need to get a new printer for the t-shirt class I'm doing because the color printing just isn't as good as it should be. So we're going to print it and then we're going to go on to the next video. All right, let that, let's sit here for one second because I'm reading these questions that are good. Oh, okay. Um, Beth, let's see, do, 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 do. is your curio is on a table that's on a carpet, it can create instability oh that makes the setching be off interesting interesting yeah a hard a hard surface is really good 
Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I will tell you what I do with my platforms. I take double-sided tape, not the good stuff, just Scotch brand, because you do want to actually have to remove it. And I tape um, my first platform to the the big heavy my first slat to the platform and i put tape in between Mm -hmm. and that seems to make it more stable and i think i in the torch fired earrings class i show how i do that but Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. i feel like but i one time used um the really good scrapbooking tape and i couldn't get anything removed (laughs) so don't use good stuff some occasionally you know um the less strong version works better so i've also done a little test cut a little circle that's in a different color so all my cut lines are red but i have a little green circle there mm-hmm. which i end up moving because i i uh the filming wasn't perfect so okay so we got it all set up all right why it's setting up we're always going to the page set up um i'll hold for the question we don't want to miss anything here so you got your mat set up mm-hmm. it's a pen and question it should- so you got your orientation. Okay. Because when I print it, I wanted to know it's a curio eight and a half by six. And I didn't use the 12 because I know most of you just have the eight and a half by six um, platform. And then I'm going to go to the page setup and we're going to uncheck the red ones because I want to test it. Um, especially if you're using different papers, I like to test it before. And I'm going to uncheck, and I didn't uncheck the red. I look always all over to the left. And it's a wonderful thing about the SIL software. What you're going to work on is lit up. So mm-hmm, I only mm-hmm. want to do that little test circle to make sure it cuts all the way through. Oh, and the I'm paper do got cards. it. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I, I hate to do all the work and have it not cut. Sure. No, testing is worth it. And you could do it with metal clay. This is how I do my test. There is a test function too, but I find this a little bit easier. That's interesting. Yeah, I've used the test function. Yeah, um, this I can put it where I want, and I yeah, yeah it's I great. Just, I just find it a little easier to do. I've done it with leather too. So I did move it because I did it three times, and so I'm just going to pull it up and make sure it cut through. And it cut beautifully. Paper cuts really nicely. As long as you keep sharpening your blade. Make sure your clips are down. One of my clips had been up. Right. Sharpened blade. Yep. Okay. Okay. So now I can go on and cut everything. So I'm going to click on the reds. But um, if any of you are uh, members of my Silly Questions group and some of my classes, there's something called Stop Before You Send. Always check your user-defined settings. In the version I'm on, there is a little thing where if you click a second time, it'll go back to the first setting. So I had one of these wrong, even though it had been right to start with. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to choose cardstock plane. I'm going to make sure it says cut. And then I'm going to go down to the big box and look at it. And then I'm going to make sure my pressure goes up. Usually I use 23 to 25 with collections paper. Okay. And so let's cut it all. All right. Let me, before I run this, let me get some questions in here. Um, Margaret wanted to know, are the pens for both the Curio and the Cameo the same? After taking- They um, are. Okay. Your class last year, you bought Cura Metal Clay Leather Package from Cool Tools, but it didn't come with pens. Uh, So you can use the two of them. It looks like they're new pens with new colors. Is that right at all? These are new pens. And you know what the, the, um, I was a little nervous because it said Cameo 4 on it, Mm -hmm. but they work fine in my Curio. So um, there are the, I don't know a lot about the Cameo 4, maybe Kay can pop in, but there are um, some converting holders. So like, I think that some of the, the, they aren't too identical, um, Holder, tool holders, and I think that there is a way to um, put the pens in with a new size. But these these worked beautifully, and they've been sitting around waiting for something like this to do. And you can do cards. You, you can do so many different things with them. I but um, Great colors. I mean, and the color comes out as great as those caps look. Yeah. And and I, I just feel the – I have the other one. I like these new ones a little bit better and you can tell the difference they're designed a little bit differently I love silhouette because they do redesign I think they've they've 
uh, change to their provider is on some of the bill. And I, I'm always a fan of a company that kind of looks at it and redesigns things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So these are the new and improved pens. The colors do look great. Um, Jerry wants to know, can all of these earrings be cut out in leather without adjustments in the design? Um, yes. Okay, can I have them all is my next question. <laughs> you know, I don't have, um, I don't my have My address? A... You want my address? That's what you want. <laughs> well, we can make you some, Allison. I think okay. you could get away with that. But um, I don't have an account count as an artist on the design store, but I have things prepared to go there. And earrings will be there. Um, I don't, I will have to test them in leather first, though. Okay. And in faux leather. My my daughter took a class um, at the last All Things Silhouette, and she took the faux leather cutting class. And we have lots of it here because she was quite enamored with the silhouette. Now, Beth wants to know, no, you're only using these pens to etch, not to etch the designs. This is just your print and cut. No, you know, that's a good question, Beth, because I used to do the design with the pens. Oh. But I found this is so much easier. You know, just print it out. It prints like in 30 seconds mm-hmm. and then cut it out. And because when I did it with the pen, the tip of the pen was thicker than the lines mm, on the mm. design. So this is this is a good way to do it. Um, like in the first video, though, if you've set it up to go on metal clay or leather, you have to fill the design with black for the printer to see it. Right. Otherwise, it sees nothing. Yes, it sees anytime there's a line thickness in a design, it, set, it shows nothing. And the, what I did with this one is, the line thickness for the reds were nothing, so they're not showing on the printout. Right. But uh, they—that is what it's cutting—is that red line that is a zero thickness. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. So it just shows, but it doesn't cut. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. it doesn't show; it just cuts. Yes. And I put the whole thing here because I knew we'd have questions. Yes, you were very you were right to do that for sure. Uh, Monica wants to know the second one from the left on the top row would be awesome kombu. Second one on the top. Oh yeah. Well, I yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm kind of playing around with um, leaving like putting less design on things and leaving bright shiny parts open or parts where you can kombu. And Pam East has really great kombu class. She does. She does. And um, the pieces in that class are just beautiful. Yeah. I've done a little bit of Kembu. I know enough to be dangerous. But, yeah, the pieces that she shows in that class are just stunning. And it does make a difference. You know, Kembu, which is adding gold to silver, is a way to add a color or dimension to silver. Because um, silver, I think, can sometimes be a little boring, even if you patina it. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling up all of these and because you braid it down the part that's cut is sticking to the mat and that's what you want that's the reason i braid it down um of course i'm going with my favorites first to see how that cut and look at it cut it out and you could do paper earrings guys i think you could do amazing paper earrings well think about it you could do great ornaments you could do great um favors for a party. I mean, you can think this through to have all kinds of fun things. And if you have, like, if you're doing custom work, you could, like, show someone a paper, yeah, that's genius. like, cut out, and they yep. could put it up by their ear and see yep. if they like it. I like custom work, but as long as you have a meeting of the minds. It's no, really, I think really that's, important. that's really great. Um, all right, so now I'm just checking for questions. Beth wanted to know about the registration idea, which of course you could do as well. You're going to start showing us that in the upcoming. I'll show that in the t-shirt class. I right. haven't taught it before, but I learned it for All Things Silhouette. I did a um, heat, uh, printable heat transfer vinyl class, and you have to do um, registration marks, and it really is pretty easy. So I'll try to make it easy for people. It's also, if you're doing something that needs you need perfect alignment. Like th- th- these may not be cut out exactly perfectly, even though I placed them on the mat. Registration marks is the way to do it. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll show a little section on that um, in the t-shirt class. I love them all cut out this way. Oh, I do too. It's like, it's like Christmas mm-hmm. without having to do all the work. Mm-hmm. 
so here is where I'm going to assess my designs. Um, so I'm going to put little ear wires in them. Um, these ones, I did a little something um, in the student group called Just the Basics and talked to people about practicing and just how to do the basics. And this was the earring from that. And I did it, I had like the earrings, 10 different designs. And this is one of the ones that people liked. Um, so I'm looking at it and making sure I'm happy with the size. And I think actually I will take the size down on this. I thought it was a little low. I like small earrings for the most part. So I'm gonna take the size down. Um, this one I really, really liked. But um, in hanging it up, I felt like I want more of a like a thinner dangle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So two uh, two things I thought of when looking at this. I'm going to skinny it up. Mm -hmm. And I also think I want to do one that follows the curve, mm -hmm, like one mm -hmm. that's wavy. Mm -hmm. So um, and, and really when it's on the screen, I don't always think of those things. But when I'm actually touching it, working with it. So here's the one where I wanted to put the... Um, your wire on the top mm -hmm. and just hang it. And that is an epic fail. <laughs> it's like a little too thick, mm -hmm. but if I sent it up, it would be problematic with it being as strong as I want it to be. And I tried drilling a hole on another copy and it just it wasn't big enough for a hole. So I'm going to show you how I fix that in the software. That could be a cute one with a post as well. I think the other thing oh, is when yeah. you can when you hold it up to your face, depending on your haircut or not haircut at the time, the earring looks different. Those look great. Yeah. I love that one. This is this was my favorite, and I, I've been really excited about making it. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit similar to that um, pentagon shape one I did for the torch fired earrings class, and that, that definitely it'll have a stone at the bottom mm -hmm. instead of a hole. Mm -hmm. And this one, although this is not as heavy as metal clay. I can I can also see if I like the hanging of an asymmetrical shape. Mm -hmm. And um, I usually don't do a lot of asymmetry, but um, I, I'm playing around with it. Mm -hmm. And this pattern is one of the patterns I'll be teaching people in the Silk Camp 2020. So yeah, I like the way it moved and I think that one's gonna be good. And the wire is good enough for my, I always want, um, the hole to be where the earring will swing. I like the earrings to have movements. And this yeah. one, it's like, there's no way I can fit anything in there. Yep, yep, yep. So we're gonna fix that too on screen. See, that could be a, a post earring. Oh, it'd be a great post earring. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really, you know, I, I need to do, my mother will only take post earrings for me. And um, I need to do a, a class. Yeah, I love that one as a post. I think that's great. Um, all right, so now, we're just going to go through, no, we have one more video before we go through those. So right, this so. is how I fix those things. Okay. So, so we're going to go back to the design tab and say, I'm going to fix those things that I had a problem with. First one I'm going to fix is these, these earrings that are um, not going to be quite right. So I'm going to copy to a new sh shape, because I don't have room to play around in mm -hmm, this one. Mm -hmm, I'm gonna copy mm -hmm. it to a new tab. Um, my design files, this one is looks reasonable, but they they have stuff all over. So I, a lot of times when I'm actually getting to the point where I'm gonna make something. You I, copy um, and paste to a clean. I, yeah. So with this one, I'm gonna actually skinny it up a little bit. I'm not gonna go through the how to design it to be a swirl, but you could just, take uh, from the right and skinny it up. And this swirl is actually one of the things I'm gonna teach in Design, design Camp 2. Isn't that great that you can just compress? <laughs> yeah. <gasps> it works. Mm -hmm. So that'll just be you know, slightly thinner, more of a dangle and mm -hmm. less boxy. On design. I think it'll mm -hmm. work. So this one I'm gonna ungroup because I don't want the, to do anything with the pattern. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna make a little, like a circle at the top with a hole in it. So I'm creating an ear wire. I could have thickened up the top, but I really like the curve. So um, so I'm gonna do internal offset, which gives me another hole. And I want the hole to be, I like everything to be about one and a half, two millimeters from the edge. 
So that works pretty good. I'm going to make those a compound path. Don't, didn't have to center because when you do an internal offset, it's automatically centered. And I'm going to put it where I want. And then I'm going to select the outside shape. Just making sure I didn't have this, the pattern centered. And I'm going to weld them together. Very cool. And what it does is it brings it to the front. So I have to send, send it to the back. back. Yeah, that's I great. I didn't lose it. So that's going to work good, I think. Um, I'll do this again in paper, though, mm -hmm, just to mm -hmm, be sure. Mm -hmm. And then you, of course, use replicate to mirror to the left, which is great. Yeah, that's a replicate and mirror. What great functions are those? And modify. We're going to use the modify panel again um, in a minute on fixing these those other earrings. But again, you gave me a good idea um, because I could shrink some of these down and make post earrings. Yeah, I love them as posts. You know, maybe everyone on here is already really good with the SIL software. Um, you know, I forget when I'm away from it for a while, but it's a great, it really is a great software to work with for all these different things. And go for the, which is the one you pay for so you can save it as SVGs. I always get them. It's a designer oh, the business. Business. Version. business. Get, yeah. spend the money for the, it, it, the first one's free. Spend the money for the next one because then when you can save it as an SVG, you can bring it into your Cricut. Um, I don't know if Kay's still on. She might know. Kay, can you bring them into Brothers? What was that called? Something and Cut? Print and Cut. Print and Cut SVGs? I don't know the answer to that. And, and Kay might know. So it gives you so much that you can do then. So what I'm doing is I'm, I drew a little oval and I'm going to ungroup everything and then just choose the, the red cutout shape because I'm going to try to make a space where I can actually put that hole in. So I'm going to select them both in center. I check, select the red, which is the cutouts and center. And, you know, um, I always in my student group, if you take the version four class, which is the one I recommend to learn the software, um, I do videos all the time for people if they don't understand something in the student group. So a student group is worth the price of admission, I think. So there we yes. go. I just curved that up a little bit. So now I can drill a hole right there. So, um, you know, I, I think that's a better option than making uh, the rim skinnier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there we go. Lovely. Okay, Miss Hall said yes. Brother Skin and Cunt can use SVGs. So there you go. Um, awesome. Yeah, learning the software and then try it out on your machines. You know, that's the thing is having that universal file to be able to use uh, with your different machines. And there's yeah, things you Kay have to knows know. A lot but... about, yeah, Kay knows a lot about all the machines. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really helpful because yep. I get a lot of questions. Um, I made that a compound. Oh, no, I subtracted it like I taught you in the other video. Okay, so there cool. we go. The earrings ready. So I will probably reprint those in paper and to um, make, sure. make sure that I'm happy with them, put them up against my ear. I did actually skin this one up a little bit because it was hitting, the point was hitting the edge of my neck. Got it. So there we go. I hope that I was love fun, that. guys. Oh my gosh. All right. So listen, this is just a quick, you will see oh. it um, in the video here. This is just what's in Design Camp um, yeah. day one. I was, so, day I was two. doing, trying to, fit, someone asked me in the in the group, where they could learn about something and I so I went and put together a table of contents for 2018 which I think is really really helpful yeah. so it tells you what is in each part and then all the bonus there's what how many six bonuses in that class and the leather bonus if you work with leather that leather bonus is amazing um and then oh, coming soon that. in July we're going to do that <laughs> You know, all your things are amazing. Um, and then here's the design appendix that I've, I've, I'm trying to stop now that I've been working on the last couple of months for Silk Camp 2020. But we're going to show you pictures of some of the things and I'll, I'll give you a quick overview and then we'll be done. We're going to do a layered piece. I think this is really cool. Kind of an organic layered piece. And that'll be a project too. I'm going to show you some easy drawing in the sales softwares. Um, this was an iris we did for a design challenge for Metaplay Now. And I think this will be a good one just to show you how I drew that in the sales software. Uh, and we're gonna do a lentil that is this optical illusion technique I'm gonna teach you. 
Um, I've come up with two new ways to do organic shapes. So I'm going to show you those and you get a slightly different outlook. Very cool. Um, I'm going to teach you this little quilt piece, how to how to create this crazy uh, looking uh, pattern for the pattern fill directory. Love these. Um, I'm going to teach you uh, this cool square technique um, using something new in version 4.3. And here's the swirls that you saw in the earrings. So I made mm -hmm, a pattern mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. I made uh, just a strip that we can use with earrings. I, I love swirls and I love the swirly patterns or some of the ones I gravitate towards a lot. And then we're going to do this. Um, some of these uh, interesting warp swirl things. And here's the swirls again, a couple different ones. All right, we're oh, going to finish up to... showing this because we love this. Well, I love Suzanne McNenley's paper alignment technique. And I wanted to show you, I speak a little bit about that, always um, talking about Suzanne's uh, class. Because it's genius what she thought up. And that class, and, there's a link in the handout. Um, it's a great class. And that's what Cindy ended up doing, learning from that, the alignment. And then I did make one of these. Oh, they're beautiful. They're just, and plus she does a little, there's a little tiny tutorial about using silver metal clay yeah. to put, she put in a silver rose. So, and it's a really cute, cute um, technique. It is. And I love that. And then she, of course, made these beautiful boxes. She doesn't do this anymore. She's moved on to other kinds of work, but she, it's great. And it's paper. You know, you can add your little embellishments, but you learn how she does that. And it's really great. That That's in your handout too, that uh, link for her class, but it's very enjoyable. You know, it's endless what you can do with these machines. Here we go again. It's down that our uh, rabbit hole that we love to go. It's it's fun because paper's inexpensive, and you can do some really cool things with it. So yeah. this is a good good class to um, and it's in an older version of the software, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to follow it because right, it's not um, that different. It's not really yeah. complicated designing. Right. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, and don't forget, use your coupon code. You'll save money on oh, everything. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. And I will good. have my classes up, I promise, this week. There you go. So just make sure you stay on our mailing list. You guys, thank you so much for coming. If we missed any of your questions, um, boot camp will be in, let's see, include everything that was in 2018. No, it'll only be new stuff in 2020, Lisa. Uh, but you might want to watch the boot camp beforehand because I will probably refer to a few of the. Right, the right. Uh, she is stinking amazing. I like what Kareem, Kareem just wrote. Does Photoshop do SVGs? Shoot, does it do SVGs? I don't think it does, Margaret. Um, I think it's you have to go to, program. It's. I think you have to use Illustrator for SVGs. Why don't I know that? I'm in Photoshop all day long. You're right. It's. I think it's Illustrator, not Photoshop. There are conversions. There are, there are conversions. Convert there are. Yep, there are photos. ways, because I remember Okay, Ms. Hall there, she had a lot of conversion things going on, but I think you have to use Illustrator, not Photoshop. Uh, but when I but think you can take through. a regular picture, and um, I talked a little bit about Capture about five fun ones ago, I think the second or third one we did, okay. and Capture will actually um, convert a photo to an SVG that you can export. Okay, said, here's the answer, Photoshop. Um, uh, CC 15 or later can export the SVGs as long as you have a path. There you go. There's the key part. You have to have that path to wow. do that. Um, thank you, Kay. Uh, so there you go, everyone. Just stay on the mailing list. Check us out on Facebook. You'll get all the information. You'll get a follow-up email about today's class. Um, I think you should make this over in your um Still questions this table of contents so that everyone can see oh, that. Oh, it's there. It's there. Okay, great. Yeah. So that's where you can get it and just, uh, or you can be seeing what I'm doing right now and, and pause the video well, it's and download. see everything. It's one of the downloads. You'll get a file for testing your alignment. Oh, right, right, right. It's one of the downloads. Get a download You're right. of this it's in the downloads. Of you'll get it all later on. So you'll get an email later today showing you how to find today's recording. Um, come back next week. Um, because resin, hello, resin. Also, let me just show you one more thing because this blew me away and, and you all are into um, the uh, uh, metal clay, of course. Uh, last week's class with Julia Ray was unbelievable and she did, 
And people said, even if you're not a beginner, this was still great. I'm making this right now with the little pearl inside. She did a great class on making these charms. Uh, and the bonus is how to add uh, half drilled beads or pearls. It was amazing. I love those. Yeah, I do too. Anyway, I just want to let you all know that. Unbelievable. And Lydia, thank you. Oh, Inkscape will take SVGs too. And it is free. I, I did do Inkscape. I think it's it's a lot to undertake um, Inkscape. And there's some glitches in it when you're running on a Mac, and especially two screens. Um, but, you know, we work around all these things. So, all right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, you know the drill. We're back again here next week. You got your coupon code. Any questions, just over to support at craftcast.com. Thank you, Ms. Pope, for sharing all that information. That was truly amazing. My pleasure. All right, hon. Talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, hon. Bye,